Lance Armstrong is one of the most popular athletes of all time. He won seven consecutive Tour de France titles, making him the world's best cyclist. All of that came crashing down in 2012 when they found evidence that Lance Armstrong was doping, using drugs and blood transfusions to unfairly enhance his physical condition during the race was illegal. Lance Armstrong admitted he was using performance enhancing drugs during an interview with Oprah Winfrey in 2013, sealing his fate. And so you know what happens when you get sued, What's the first thing that happens? You get deposed. So did I want to sit with Oprah, who I liked and trusted, or did I want to sit in a, in a small room at a lawyer's office with a grainy video, some guy just hammering my ass and leaking the video? So I said, fuck it, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna get it out there. Uh, for non-cycling and sports fans, it was way too much. Right. You're talking about EPO and transfusions and all, it was, they were like, whoa. And then for the cycling fan, it wasn't enough. You right. didn't say enough. You didn't. You didn't tattle tell enough. You didn't rat it. You didn't say enough. So no one was satisfied. Everybody's pissed. You went into the interview thinking at least now people will feel satisfied. Fuck, I left there thinking, wow, that was that was pretty good, and it was, <laughs> it was the, the reaction it was, was brutal. Brutal. Brands like Nike, which had supported him before, dropped him. There was a mixed reception within his fan base. Some hated him for cheating. Others justified his actions by claiming doping and blood transfusions were rampant among the Tour de France cyclists during those days. The logic was everyone was cheating. There were even cyclists who had cheated in the competitions decades ago, but everyone still loved them. What people don't understand is like, I mean, Lance only peaked for one race a year. Like everything that that team U.S. Postal did was geared for that one race. Um, and also when you really look at how much doping they did, it actually wasn't that much. Like, you know, when they were blood transfusing, it might have been two units over the course of a race. And I'm not saying that that wouldn't help. It would help a lot. But that's nothing compared to what people were doing just a few years before Lance came along. The Tour de France is the most unhealthy thing on the face of the earth. I've heard that it's healthier to do the Tour de France on steroids than it is to do it off steroids. Absolutely. fucking lutely so why should the cheating matter? Regardless, what Lance Armstrong did was illegal. The Tour de France revoked his titles right away. Many sued the disgraced cyclist for millions of dollars. Armstrong had cheated to get his fame and fortune, and the people had every right to take it away from him. And they did. Armstrong was losing millions of dollars in court battles. When the dust settled, the man was heavily in debt. It seemed like he would never be able to pay back what he owed. Just as people thought, hopeful Lance Armstrong was lost, forced to live through the consequences of his own actions, financial ruin, shame, and endless suffering for both himself and his family. Just as everything seemed lost, a bombshell announcement dropped on December 2018. People found out Lance Armstrong had a new way to make money, and no, it had nothing to do with sports at all. In a CNBC interview, Lance Armstrong explained how Silicon Valley saved his life. Apparently, Armstrong made money by investing Investing in Uber before it became a household name. Lance Armstrong himself wasn't even aware he had shares in Uber at the time. I didn't even know that he did Uber. I thought he was buying up a bunch of Twitter shares from employees or former employees and the biggest investment in, in lowercase fund one was Uber. What happened was, back in 2009, three years before the doping scandal, Armstrong had invested $100,000 into a company called Lowercase Capital. An ex-Google employee, Chris Sacha, called Lance Armstrong one day. Chris was just about to start his own venture capital fund, Lowercase Capital. He was looking for investors. By stroke of luck, Chris thought to call Armstrong to get the cyclist to invest in his budding VC fund. Armstrong thought Chris was smart and well-connected. He put in $100,000 thousand dollars into the fund, believing Chris was just going to buy up some Twitter shares from Twitter employees or something, but it was more than that. When I met Chris Saka, he was, I believe he was at either Google or Twitter. And, you know, you know, Saka's personality, larger than life, and we were having fun, and we kept in touch. And then some years later, uh, probably around 08 or 09, he left to start his own venture capital fund called Lowercase Capital. And he called me and said, looking for investors, would you invest? And I'm thinking to myself, this guy has a huge personality, but he's also very smart, very well connected. Why not? 
So I invested in Krisaka. Lowercase Capital would go on to invest in many startups that would become giants in the valley. Twitter, Twilo, Instagram, the payment processor Stripe, a crowdfunding startup called Kickstarter, and one of Lowercase Capital's greatest investments, Uber. Lance Armstrong was emotional when he discussed his lucky break. The $100,000 investment had saved his family from financial ruin. No one knows how much he made from the Lowercase Capital investment. How much money did you give him? 100,000 bucks. How much is that? It's 100,000 worth today. It's, 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 it's a lot more. What are we talking, ballpark? No, no I mean, it, I, it's, it's, it's too good to be true. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollars? It's, it's one of those, it's, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. It's, it's, it's saved our family. But from the looks of it, the money made was enough to pay back the millions he owed to the various legal battles he lost and the millions he had to pay to the US government for cheating during his time at the US postal team. Armstrong didn't get off scot-free. He had a lucky break instead. The clout Armstrong had achieved during his cycling days gave him the connections he needed to save himself. These days, Armstrong is running Next Ventures, a venture fund he co-founded to support startups involved with sports and nutrition. Back in 2019, Next Ventures managed to raise $24 million out of their $75 million goal to fund the venture capital firm. Not content with his brush from financial ruin, Lance Armstrong became a YouTuber. Specifically, Lance Armstrong launched a podcast on his VDo YouTube channel that gives analysis on the Tour de France cycling and other cycling races. He has a series called The Move where he talks more about cycling as well. You can pay $99 a year to get access to the exclusive live streams as well as other perks within the season pass. He has another podcast called The Forward where he interviews athletes, musicians, influencers and politicians. Both podcasts are available on WeDo's YouTube channel. The WeDo podcast is also connected to his WeDo brand of clothing. This is a video of Lance Armstrong shilling for his sponsors. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Move podcast brought to you each and every day this summer by Ketone IQ. Of course, made by HVMN. We'll get into that a little bit later. It is the real deal. Uh, our listeners get a free element sample pack with any order. Uh, brought to you each and every day this summer by Ketone IQ. Today's show brought to you by Roka. Today, uh, Roka has completely invented uh, a, a whole new class of eyewear. Just go to Roka, R-O-K-A dot com and use the code THEMOVE for 20% off. Uh, today's show also brought to you by Huckberry. Huckberry is building the future of retail for active, adventurous guys. Where style and adventure converge, millions trust them as their one-stop men's shop for discovering and shopping well-crafted products. Listeners get a free element sample pack with any order. Uh, if you head on over to drinklmnt.com slash themove, Again, that's drinklmnt.com slash the move. Uh, today's show brought to you like it is each and every day uh, by Aura Ring. Uh, I was a, a full admission. I was not, I'm not looking at my sleep data from last night. George, I feel like absolute dog shit right now. Stayed up too late. Um, but that's that has nothing to do with PowerDot, actually. Uh, but I love this company. I love the brand. I love the product. It's a daily ritual for me. Uh, also, which is awesome. Integrates with Apple Health and Strava. Athletes in the tour are using it. National Football League, Major League Baseball, PGA. If you don't like it, 30-day money-back guarantee. I mean, what can go wrong? What even you can make the right decision in there, George? <laughs> Head on over to powerdot.com slash the move. The buy code is the move. 20% off. There's the flow code. <clears throat> Today's show also brought to you by Roka. I, I wore the uh, my titanium aviators yesterday the blue ones but this is next level cool while lance armstrong isn't busy commentating on sports he's visiting his coffee shop juan pelota which means one ball this is a crude reference to that time where he had to remove his balls to fight his testicular cancer there's a bike shop called the mellow johnny connected to his coffee shop as well if you want to know more about what lance armstrong has been up to these days you can look to the fox channel for answers the fox network has a tv series called stars on mars where celebrities would live together in an australian camp to simulate 
simulate life on Mars. Lance Armstrong was one of the celebrities who was invited to join the reality TV show. Armstrong and the celebrities were supposed to compete by completing missions handed to them. Celebrities who failed to contribute for the mission would be eliminated. Lance Armstrong has threatened to quit the Stars on Mars show after he got into an argument with an actress, Ariel Winter. Armstrong said he felt that trans athletes should have their own special category. Ariel rejected this idea. She claimed Armstrong was ostracizing people who didn't fit in the categories. The argument got worse. Armstrong said he was not living in this hab another day with certain people. Ariel Winter said she was going to auto-select herself to leave. Armstrong responded by saying he didn't need the drama, so he would auto-select himself to leave. After sleeping on it, Armstrong decided not to leave the Fox reality TV show. If you're still interested in what Armstrong is up to, you can visit his We Do YouTube channel. I hope you liked the video, leave a like if you did, and subscribe if you haven't already. It's much appreciated.